Applications for synthetic blood could be a lot. Uh, you could look at the particles like a dump truck that could pick up, say, cholesterol or some other uh, toxin in the body and maybe carry it out. I'm Tim Merkel, and I'm a grad student here in my fifth year, and my project is making synthetic red blood cells. What we wanted to see was if we could make particles that had uh, sort of mechanical properties that were really similar to blood cells, if they would act in the body in the same way. What these particles do that others couldn't is they're large particles that circulate for a long time. That's one thing that's totally unprecedented. Uh, typically particles of this size would get stuck almost immediately in your capillaries. So far, we've demonstrated that if we make the particles more deformable, they circulate for a longer period of time. They seem to be able to, to squish and squeeze through small, tight spaces in the body. And that could be huge for the field of drug delivery, where what we'd like to do is have a particle that holds a drug and then takes it right to a cancer cell and nowhere else in the body. And that's so you don't get those bad side effects from chemo drugs. Your hair falls out, you lose your appetite. Donated blood right now, it has a shelf life of about 40 days. It has to be refrigerated. Of course, you have to match blood types. And a synthetic product potentially wouldn't have any of these limitations. But where it's at now, uh, you're not gonna go to your pharmacist and ask for a pint of fake blood, but uh, 10 years or 20 years down the line, uh, what we learned today uh, could lead to something like that.